Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio audience, any point in time during this broadcast. Opportunities afforded to you to pick up your phones, dial 281 837 2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'd love to give you book, chapter, verse for all of your Bible questions, and we want to listen to your comments as well. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to deal with the subject this afternoon, adding and subtracting to God's Word, adding and subtracting to God's Word. And what we're going to do, we got a few questions that were posed to us, and we just kind of want to deal with the questions uh, and some thoughts, even from last week, and bring them up in this hour, uh, half-hour segment, okay? I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Law of Moses, and uh, in these verses, Moses is commanding obedience to the children of Israel. He says, beginning in verse 1, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments, which I teach you, for to do them that you may live, go in, and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers given you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I commanded you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. Okay? I've read Deuteronomy chapter 4, 1 and 2, and uh, I believe what we want to deal with is the first question. And this first question derived around the subject of justification and sanctification. Those two words, justification and sanctification. Now, let me uh, make sure we understand. When we talk about the word sanctification, and I, again, the number is 281-837-2222. Good to have Brother Ozan. He, he made it in, and uh, he actually has those questions uh, uh, in his phone, and he'll just, as he pull them up, he'll uh, go ahead. If I miss something, he'll let me know what I'm missing on this subject of justification and sanctification. But we talk about the word sanctification. The word simply means set apart. Uh, when you talk about the word sanctification, we're talking about a word that simply means set apart apart for the word of God. And you talk about justification. I want us to understand that the only way a one can be justified today is by having faith in what God has said. Now, it's key for us to understand that sanctification and justification, uh, as it relates to becoming a child of God, this act of sanctification and justification happens at the same time. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is key, and if you tuned in on last week, we, we made mention to you all who believed in the false doctrine of men such as Greg Griffin and Joel Osteen and many others like them who preaches this doctrine of a sinner's prayer. Please understand, as we mentioned last week, there is no sinner's prayer anywhere in the Bible. There is no prayer that anybody can pray. There is no prayer that any apostles told anybody to pray in order to be born again, to receive the Spirit of God, and to become a child of God. But in order to become a child of God, one must be justified and sanctified. And so the question should be, in your mind, in my mind, where does the justification and the sanctification process, where does that take place? Now, look with me, if you'd be so kind, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 9. This is the Apostle Paul, and this is the contextual setting. The Apostle Paul is writing to the saints in Corinth, uh, a, a church uh, of Gentiles who are now Christians, obey the gospel, uh, who are not Jews, uh, but they've obeyed the gospel. And he says to them in verse 9, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuse of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I make sure this is not an exhaustive list, but I want you to make sure you understand something that these sins, if not repented of, if not uh, forgiven by God of, are going to lead you into a devil's hell. And it doesn't matter how mad people get. These, uh, these sins, if not repented of, will find your soul in a devil's hell. Now, and this is what the Bible says the Gentile uh, Christians were. Now, notice with me in verse 11. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, 
and such were some of you. But you are Wash. Here you go. You see that? Now notice what they were. They were baptized. You can look at the when the church in Corinth started back in Acts chapter Acts chapter uh, eighteen. You'll find there when the church in Corinth got started. Paul, Paulos, they went to Corinth. They preached the gospel message. They preached the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. These Gentiles who are now who hear the gospel. They heard it, believe, repent, confess, and they got baptized. This is why Paul said they were washed. Now, what happened when they were washed, when they were baptized? This is what happens when you're baptized. He said, but you are sanctified. Here's our word. Baptism sets you apart. It set them apart from these sins that they were doing. But you are justified. Now, when, when did the justification happen? Also in the water. In the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Baptism is the beginning point of your justification and your sanctification from your sins. Now, I think we need to understand, again, as I mentioned, sanctification simply means set apart, sanctified, you're holy. You know, it's what, and while I'm in this neighborhood, it's what every Christian should be doing in their lives, in their works, as it relates to how we live our lives uh, here on earth. We ought to be set apart from the world. In other words, you're a Christian, uh, you're a male Christian, you need to be sanctifying your house. Uh, you, you shouldn't have children running in your house in and out, uh, uh, doing drugs, sleeping, fornicating. You know, got mm -hmm. children sleeping around in your house and you, and you giving them the condoms to do so. Mm -hmm. You're not sanctifying your house. If you are a male Christian and your wife is not, you need to be trying to sanctify your house and tell your wife, turn off the TV and let her know why our children ain't going to the Baptist church. Amen. Why they ain't going to the Methodist church. You need to be sanctifying, setting your house apart because you are holy and you have received the spirit of God. And he, he also says that you're justified in the name of the, of the Lord our God. Now, let me say this about justification before I talk to one of these great brothers who are way more capable than me uh, to explain this uh, subject to us. Now, we talk about justification. I want you to understand this. We're not justified and neither can we be in and of our own works. Amen. Our own marriage. There is no law. I want you to get this. There is no law that you and I can and have perfectly kept in order to be justified or made right in the sight of God. See, this is why we have to understand something. Uh, see, this is why the Bible shows us, and Paul shows us time and time again, that, that God is not just the God of the Gentiles, but, uh, but the, of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. One had the law and one didn't have the law. But in order for them to be justified, here's where the common denominator for people to be justified. Here's the common denominator for anybody to be justified, made right in the sight of God. The one work that everybody must have is the work of faith. Faith in what God promised he would do. See, when they heard the gospel, these Corinthians, and, and 1 Corinthians 6, 11, it says they were washed, they were sanctified, they were justified. How were they justified? They believed the words were God's. And so when they believed what the, the, the gospel preacher said to them about what they needed to do to be saved, no, and it wasn't a sinner's prayer, they believed that what Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Their faith in God's word and being obedient to God's word, not the law, but being obedient to God's word is what justified them, which makes them righteous. And so, therefore, it's nothing you and I can boast about. There's nothing you and I can brag about. Because in our, our righteousness, as Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 64, and I'm going to toss it, Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 6, our own righteousness is like filthy rag. There is no righteousness in and of that we create that can justify us in the sight of God. Isaiah says it like this. Isaiah 64 and verse 6. But we are all as unclean thing. We are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 6. And so you get over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, this is why Paul lets us know that we are saved. We are saved by grace. Now, I want you to get this. Ephesians chapter 2 and, and verse number 4. Paul says, but God, who is rich in mercy, 
For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. He's writing to those who obey the gospel. These Ephesians have obeyed the gospel, and it wasn't by no sinner's prayer. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved, get this, through faith. You see that? Through faith. Being obedient to what God said, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Now get this, lest any man should boast. Now I want you to understand it. Not works you make up to do. Not works you decide to do. Nothing you can boast about but doing the works of God. Faith is a work, but it's a work God said you must do in order to be saved. Baptism is a work, but we didn't make it up. Work is a work that God said you have to do. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's the work. We didn't make it up. So we have nothing to boast about. Nothing to brag about. But our faith in what God has said sanctifies us when we obey it. And it justifies us. Even after we get baptized. Even after we get baptized. If you're a Christian got the spirit, what you do if you have godly sorrow... You ask God to forgive you, and the sanctification process is still working. When we as Christians ask God for forgiveness, what God gives us, boy, Javi, I said I'm going to toss this, didn't I? In Hebrews chapter 2, I want to read this. Hebrews chapter, this is for those of us who are Christians. Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible says in verse number 10, the Bible tells us this. He says, but, uh, he says, for it became him, for it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Yeah, we suffer by uh, we suffer in this world as a Christian. We have a cross that we bear as Christian. But notice this, verse eleven: For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So when I ask for forgiveness, when I do mess up, when I do fall short, what I do is I have a captain of my salvation who will continue to sanctify me, set me apart, and make me holy when I have a godly, repentative heart to stop doing sin and practicing sin in my life. It's a blessing. It's a blessing when you have faith in God and be obedient to his word to be justified and sanctified. And so that's the definition there of sanctification and justification. It's a process. And it's a process that will continue uh, it, it, by the hand of God, by the power of God, until you and I leave here. 281-837-2222. At this time, I toss it, Brother Javier. Thank you for Amen. your patience. God bless you, Brother Henry. Amen. Audience, I pray that you're listening uh, to the words that Brother Henry has just spoken. Uh, concerning this subject, when you look at justification, audience, saints, that word justified, 1344, is to be innocent, to render, show regard as innocent, free. Righteous, a word for uh, sanctification, sanctified, G37. It's described as holy, that is ceremonial, purifier, consecrate, to venerate, hollow, to wash. So it's a cleansing of sins from the soul. That's sanctification. Amen. Justification is to be made righteous because of the acts that you've done, the works that you've obeyed that God has instructed you uh, to do. Now, a person can fall and sin. He can get stained again. Mm -hmm. And when he gets stained again, he needs the blood of Christ to cleanse him again. That's sanctification. So he can be justified. That's to be made righteous after he dirties himself up or she mm -hmm. dirties herself up. And so when it comes to the blood of Christ, where do we receive him? We see, receive him in baptism. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. A lot of people say baptism is stupid. But the idea is that 1 Peter 3.21 says it also saves. Hmm. Now saves, it says. So how and where can I read that baptism is stupid? Because that's where sanctification happens. That's where one obeys a command where he can be uh, justified because he obeyed that command that freed him from his sins and he was made a part of the righteous acts chapter 2 he was added to the Lord, to the number by the lord so the idea is that i don't know where people are coming as brother henry mentioned the sinner's prayer 
I hear it a lot from people's mouths, but I can't see it in the Bible, anyone doing it. I can't see the 3,000 doing it. I can't see Cornelius doing it. I can't see Paul doing it after three days of being blind uh, when he was told to, by Ananias to be baptized. I, I just can't see that. The eunuch, I can't see him uh, doing a sinner's prayer. I just, I don't read that. It's not readable. So we're talking about adding and subtracting to Amen. God's word. Amen. Adding and subtracting to God's word. And I don't I don't see that that addition of the sinner's prayer. I can't read it in the scriptures. When you look at uh, the Bible in uh, Acts chapter number 20, verse 7, look what it says. It says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, we asked, had a question concerning, Can I take the Lord's Supper every day? Now, what did they do on the first day of the week? It was to break bread, to worship. It's to worship, not to play games. Uh, look at uh, when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, looking at verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints that I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one lay by him in store as God has prospered, that there be no gatherings when I come. They did this work on the first day of the week. They did the Lord's Supper on the first day uh, of the week. And so the Bible tells us what we are, what we are to do. It gives us instructions. So when it comes to adding and subtracting, there's other subjects as well. Uh, we don't see the book of Ido. We know Josiah. Josiah, he found the law. And that's the law that he found. He didn't find any other books. He found the law. And so the New Testament, Old Testament that we have today is what God has preserved for us. Remember, the book of the laws that Josiah found is what God preserved. He Amen. preserved that. If you look at Acts 15, looking at verse 1 concerning yes. circumcision circumcision, uh, there was a discussion. Uh, it says that certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem uh, until the apostles and elders about this question. The answer was given all throughout this chapter and also it was given in verse number 24. Where it says, For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. That commandment was for the Old Testament for the Hebrews. When it comes to the eighth day, the child was, sub was supposed to be circumcised or a proselyte that wanted to be a part of Judaism. He will be circumcised to be uh, added to the faith. But the idea is that after Christ he died, he buried, resurrected on the cross is where he put away the law according to Hebrews chapter 9, 15 uh, and following. And so that is no longer in effect. So you cannot add that a part of faith to the New Testament. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath days. So the new moon is done away with. Holy days of the old law done away with. Sabbath Days have been done away with. In the Old Testament, there was a man picking up sticks. And what happened to him? He got stoned. So when it comes to the Sabbath days, no man can judge you concerning keeping it. Because why? It's been done away. Amen. It's been done away. Amen. So for someone to tell you that you have to keep the Sabbath in order to be just, justified, sanctified, he's lying to you. Amen. Tithing. Is done away with the Jews. They would give to the Levitical priest uh, of their belongings, either corn, wild, or their first first fruits that they had. They would bring it. They would have that for the Levitical priesthood. But what happened when Christ died on the cross? That order has been done away with. God told Nathan and David concerning the Levites to use instrumental music in the temple. We don't have a temple anymore. And guess what we don't have? Levites. That's been done away with. So you don't have it anymore. There's no more Levites anymore. There is no example of New Testament Christians using instruments in worship. Sing with the heart, sing with the spirit. Colossians 3.16. So the book of Ido, we don't have it. It wasn't preserved for us. We don't have the other books that are listed uh, concerning the Old Testament as it mentions it. We read it last week. Brother Ozan read it in John chapter 20. Then I'll toss it. John chapter 20. I just want to read this one more time. 
Verse 30, and many are the signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is a Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Life through his name. And so there was a lot of things that were done. Signs. Jesus did the presence of his disciples. He did them. But they weren't recorded. The Holy Spirit said, I'm not recording this. Amen. I'm not recording this sign, this miracle he did on this day that Jesus did. I'm not recording it. Uh, don't write it. He said, but these are written. These are written. And so I don't know. Some people have a uh, an insatiable desire to add to God's word. They just want more. I've read the Bible two, three times. I want more now. Give me something else. So they, they lean to other things. Aliens. Uh, uh, Ezekiel. He's seen aliens. It was something else. And they want the book uh, of Barnabas. They want the book of Judas Iscariot, the book of Mary Magdalene. They just want more and more until their belly gets full of contradiction and addition and subtraction. But these are written. Audience, take heed. These words are going to judge us. God's preserved them for us. Amen. The number calls 281-372-22. Thank you, Brother Javier. Please. What we have in our hand, the 66 books, is enough. Unfortunately, we got men who call themselves Jews today. Uh, you know, you can get on the website and you see guys who even today trying to speak against the Church of Christ. And, you know, and they hold on to this book that's called the Apocrypha. Let me tell you right now, off the, off the, before I say anything else, the Apocrypha is not inspired by God. The name itself means doubtful writings. Uh, it's, it, that these guys who hold the Apocrypha and, uh, in, in, in a high esteem to the Word of God, these are false doctrine teachers. Amen. Let me tell you what else they are. They are, they are, they are guys, I'm going to tell you this, they are guys who don't believe in the same Jesus that the 66 books talk about. Believe Amen. me, they have a different God and a different, anybody who, who holds the Apocrypha has a different Jesus than the one that created heaven and the earth, than the Son of God. But just, just, just believe what I'm telling you. They do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and these guys are anti-Christ. That's what they are, anti-Christ. Because that Apocrypha, let me tell you what it does. It contradicts. If you study that Apocrypha, it contradicts what we know that we have inspired by the Spirit. Deuteronomy 13 says it like this. Deuteronomy chapter 13, under the law... God gave through Moses a warning, and I want you to listen to the warning because that apocrypha will lead you to idolatry. The guys that teach this uh, uh, apocrypha on YouTube, just listen to them. They are so ignorant. They're ignorant. They are so ignorant. They're racist, many of them. Not all, I don't know them all. I'm just talking about the ones I do. Are racist. Uh, they look at the outer appearance instead of the inner appearance. They'll tell you the Bible is not for a certain race of people. That's what they do. They'll tell you because the color of your skin, the Bible's not for him. How can you say that if the Bible tells us that God made of all, all nations from one blood? How can you say that? Amen. All races came from God, but they're idiots. That's what they are. They are racist idiots. Now, Deuteronomy 13 verse 1 says this. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams... And give it to a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, where he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you've not known, and let us serve them. You should not listen unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, now, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all, with all your soul. You see that? Somebody comes up with another book, the Apocrypha. Do not follow those clowns. That's what he's saying. Don't follow them. God will, will test you. Let me tell you something. We try things by the Spirit. We prove all things by the 66 books that we have. He said, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, everyone who, who wrote that Apocrypha, I don't know all the uh, books of the Apocrypha. I can care less what the books of the Apocrypha say. But one thing I do know is they're not inspired by God. Mm -hmm. I know one thing. I never see Jesus talking about not one book in that Apocrypha. Not one. I see Jesus in his earthly ministry. He never brings up one verse from the Apocrypha. Isn't that something? Not one verse. And so he says, uh, uh, and, and obey his voice, you shall serve him, and cleave unto him, verse 5, that prophet or that dream or dream shall be put to death. 
Because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust you out of the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk in. So thou, so you shall put the evil away from the midst of you. Put that evil book down. Put that uninspired book down. And just be happy with the 66 books that we have that are written that we can prove that are inspired by God. 281-837-2222. Brother Stephen Ozan. Thank you, Henry. And thank you, Javier. Uh, man, Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you, And we appreciate what you have been teaching us on the airways. God bless you. Now, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on, but I'm so excited about this topic. I had to take away. You know, the Bible talks about marking those who teach contrary. I'm going to mark somebody now, but he's not in the kingdom. He's out because Jesus spoke against Herod. He wasn't in the kingdom. I'm going to speak against Michael Johnson. Praise God. Now, see, the problem with Michael Johnson, he is supposed to be educated. But the problem is he's a hypocrite. He speaks heavily against the Hispanic race. I don't know what he has against the Hispanic. But he, he has a doctrine that is akin to another group of black racists who teach black people will be in heaven and Hispanics will be our servants, which is foolishness. Amen. But that's his type of doctrine leans into that type of doctrine. But one of the things you have to understand about Michael Johnson, if he was so educated, he would know what hypocr hypocrisy is. He's a hypocrite. He went to two white schools, and I say white not to discredit white, white on white ran schools. Mm -hmm. And that's how he gets his props and credentials. Mm -hmm. Now, if blacks are so superior, why didn't you go to a historically black college mm. to get your paper? Did you not think that it would give you the glory you sought? So you went to the very white man you talk about, and now you've received this paper in your pocket. You got his paper in your pocket. Hypocrite. You don't have anything but hypocrisy in your pocket. Amen. So I want to share with you how ignorant in so allegedly learned so-called Hebraists are supposed to be experts of the language. Now, I was told by people like Michael Johnson that Gentile refers to the scattered tribes that did not remain faithful. Mm. And Jew refers only to those of Judaism. And I noticed some of you saints on that listening to the nonsense and childlike teaching Michael Johnson gives. But I'm going to show you why I can say he's childlike. Now, I'm going to pull up the word Gentile in Ephesians 2. Now, see, here's where the problem comes. See, when you say something publicly, you forget there's other people that talk about you. We don't have to watch it. It's so ridiculous. The people that's listening to you think something wrong with you, and they're Amen. right. There is something wrong with you. you. You you need to go get your money back from the school if you pay if you paid at all because they got you, man. Now, here's the idea. Gentiles in the book of Ephesians uh, chapter Number two. Look at verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. That's what he says. Who are called uncircumcision. Validating this is a specific group. Watch this now. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Okay, now, now we know that's a Jew. Now he's going to clarify it in verse 12. Well, look at verse 11. I'm going to make sure you get this word Gentile now because the antecedent is Gentile. G1484. A race. Now, the brother's been explaining this all day. Ethnos. A race. As of the same half. There's a call online. We're going to have to ask you to wait because we got to get this nailed down. We got to expose Michael Johnson. That is a tribe, specifically a foreign, one usually by implication, Gentile. Now, watch. Now, watch the understanding of. The word concerning Jew. See, it isn't used Jew. That's why I love the law so much. Mm. See, because he doesn't use Jew because he knows it's going to have liars like this individual, Michael John. I asked the radio says, just be patient. Let me get this last one read, and then we're going to be through. We're going to be through for the day. Just be patient. Now, this Ephesians 2 12. Now, he doesn't use Jew because he knows I'm going to stop this liar, Michael John. Now, God, the Holy Ghost, no, I'm going to stop him before he's born. Look at Ephesians 2 12. That at the time when you were without Christ, still the antecedent is Gentiles, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, 
and strange us from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. What's the word Israel mean? Does it mean Judaism too? No, We're going to kill that lie. G2474. G2474. Israel, that is Jisrael, the adopted name of Jacob, including his descendant, literal fiction. Now, so we done. So now Israel is the entire people from north to south, from Dan to Beersheba. And Gentiles are those who are non Jews. So now, see what you what you what you have been listening to on the radio, I mean on the YouTube to this false teacher, unlearned and ignorant in the ways of God, Michael Johnson, you have been stuck on the word Judaism. You've been stuck on the word Judea. But this text shows you that it's talking about a separation of the word Gentile from anything or relative to Israel that came out of Jacob's loin. And Judah is one of 12 sons. Just one of 12. So no, you lost your argument, Michael. You should have stayed woke in class. I know they taught you this much because this is so ridiculous for you to teach that Gentiles. And we know the word can be referred to any nation. But for you to say Gentile is not talking about all of the people outside of the kingdom of God. It's only talking about the ten tribes, not tribes. This text says you're wrong. Now see, those of you in the church of Christ, you better watch yourself trying to follow this guy on this so-called King James University. You better understand how to read English before you start dipping into any other language like Chaldee, Latin, Hebrew, and Greek. You better learn English first and recognize it explains to you all in verse 12. Israel, stranger from the covenant of promise. Who's the stranger? The antecedent. Gentile. They were strangers. The children of God have never been strangers to the promise. All that came out of Jacob's loins are part of the promise, including the proselyte. A Gentile is not a proselyte in his belief because he believes in the kingdom of God. And that's why David is punished severely for killing a Gentile named Uriah the Hittite because his heart belonged to God. And he was one of David's mighty men, and he was more faithful than the king David to the word of God. And that's why David suffered so after taking an innocent man's life. Amen. As much as I got to say about Amen. Michael Johnson and erroneous teaching, and you can hide all day on the YouTube, but we're going to always call out fake people because you reach to the children of God. Now, put your hands on the children of God, my, and you're going to fall, friend. In this life and the world to come, at the hands of God Almighty. The number card is 281-837-2222. Powerful, powerful, powerful word, uh, right. Brother Ozan. Now, yeah, let me show you how ignorant, uh, and I wasn't going to bring his name or give him no type of glory, but if I know he listens, he is an idiot. Amen. And, uh, we Amen. talked to him, Brother Ozan has talked to him before, so you are sensitive to war. This no brother Ozan have reached out to this guy, Brother Javier, Amen. several uh, times trying to reach for his soul because Jesus did die for him too. But see, he's proven that this is why other books need to be put down. Michael Johnson is a study of the Apocrypha, and it contradicts God's word. Amen. You know, simple definition of the word uh, uh, Gentile is Brother Ozan, G1484. It means a race for a foreign, non-Jewish. That's what the word means. Amen. But Michael Johnson and those like him who hold on this apocrypha that contradicts uh, the 66 inspired books can't even understand and grasp how to put line upon line and scripture upon scripture because the apocrypha simply helps him lie. That's Amen. all he can do. He's a liar because he's following the father of lies, and that is the devil himself. Let me tell you what else Michael Johnson. See, let me tell you where, how else he contradicts the scripture. Now, again, remember what I said. He preaches another Jesus. If you don't get nothing Amen. else, please, you don't get nothing else, just understand, anybody who holds the Apocrypha at the same degree of inspiration as the 66 books, they preach, and they have to. They preach another Jesus. Amen. See, Michael Johnson gets on his YouTube, and notice what he says. I'm going to make sure 
the last thing I do is destroy the church. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what he said. I'm going to destroy the church of Christ. Now, now that statement alone contradicts Daniel 2.44. Now, because when I look at Daniel 2.44, the Bible says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Amen. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Here's what I want y'all to ask Michael Johnson. Ask him this. Did Jesus build a church? Ask him this. Is Jesus, is he a king? Does Jesus have a kingdom? Just ask him those questions. Ask him what is Jesus talking about in Matthew 16 when Jesus says, upon this rock, upon the statement that Peter made, that I'm the Christ, that I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, Michael Johnson is so ignorant that he doesn't understand. And we talk about church. He's, he tried to link us up, the Church of Christ, with the Catholic Church. He doesn't understand. So he tells us, oh, I can go. Uh, y'all show me who the leaders of y'all church was. Uh, you ought to show some history. And he's offering a million dollars. This is what he's doing. He's offering a million dollars. For us to prove when the church started. You know why? Because he's fleshly. He's carnal. He doesn't understand that Christ's church is spiritual. It's kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. And it started on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Amen. In Acts chapter 2. That's where the church started. And the head of the church is no physical man. It's Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. Michael Johnson can't see that. You know why? He's blind. He wants to he wants glory while he's here on his earth on this earth. He's looking for his reward right now. And that's why he can't even see simple, basic, elementary, milk of the word teaching. Put the apocrypha down. Amen. Put it down, my friend, before you lose your soul in a devil's hell. Man. Paul in Romans 9 says it like this. Romans chapter 9, Paul says this. Even us whom he had called. Notice what he says, Michael Johnson. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, why would he? Why would Paul say, if he's talking about Jews and, and the Gentiles or somebody, how could, why would he say not of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles? Because there are okay. other nation of people that's okay. not Jews. As he said also in Hosea, okay. I will call them my people, okay. get this, which were not my people. Okay. You see that? And her beloved, which was not my okay. beloved. They were not Jews. You see that? They were not God's people. They were uh, estranged from the covenant of the promises of the commonwealth of Israel, which made them another nation, Gentile. See, Michael Johnson will never be able to explain to you and I uh, about Abraham and how God said he was going to make out of him a nation. He doesn't understand that before Abraham became a nation, he was a nation, and he was a Gentile. He was a nation other than the Jews. So God took Abraham, a Gentile, made a nation through him, Jacob, Israel, to bring in Jews and and Gentiles, people of other nations. You're a racist, my friend. You're a racist. God made of all, uh, from one blood, he made all nations. Your blood is red, so is Javier's, so is the Africans, the Chinese. They all are created in the image of the Most High God. Amen. My man, you better fix this thing before you die. Mm -hmm. You better fix this before you die and stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I don't care what, what kind of obsession you got with black folk. I don't know what white people or other, any other race has done to you. But you can't go to heaven, my friend, being a racist with prejudice in your heart. You're teaching another Jesus, my friend. You're teaching another Jesus we can't read about in the Bible. And if you don't fix it, no bitter tear you can cry on the day of judgment is going to help you. And we hope you get saved. We don't hate you. Jesus died for you, too. But you better get this thing right. 281 837 Amen. Brother Amen. Uh, thank you, Henry. You know, one of the things we have to understand about life is that if you're going to play by the rules, you need to understand, and I need to understand something very important. You can't use the Bible and talk against Christ on the open airwaves of life and think, you're not going to be just simply noted. See, you're noted. You're just noted that these are the things that come out of your mouth. And see, here's the thing I have to help people understand 
is, is that you and I must embrace, if the Bible is going to be the book for religion, that means all the other books have to be separate. One of the things you have to understand is, the only reason we're not picking cotton no more under the rule of wicked men is because the Constitution shows that was an error. So you all love that one book. The only reason people are not yanking us and hanging us no more, I just said people, is because the Constitution was realized, okay, now, Supreme, was, Supreme Court has to go, okay, well, this is wrong. But well, that's a Supreme Court in heaven, and Amen. God is over it, and he's placed Christ and everything below in his control. And so when you, Michael Johnson, speak against the Bible, you know where you lie. If, if I wouldn't even take a penny from you, but since you offered a million dollars, you really owe money to all the saints. Because if you want to know who's the father, let me read it for you in Ephesians chapter 2. You, you've already hurt yourself. You lost your man. You better be thankful to God we don't want your money. Amen. <laughs> you better be Good glad because if we went to court, we could literally point this out. And so if they use a Bible which you say you teach from, you lost your million dollars. Amen. Here goes the founder of the church of Christ. Now here it is his body, the body of Christ. Now look at Ephesians chapter 2, if you will. And he's going to show how he draws together two different nations under one. Look at Ephesians 2, and we will start. Right up here at verse 11. Wherefore, well, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, he's gonna be real specific. Or well, call a circumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, not just Judah, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, who you somewhere a time far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who have made both one. He's talking about only two groups. So that means he made everybody else for nothing if they're not Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. And that broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Now, you know who writing this, Paul? You know who Paul is? One of the us that circumcised a real Jew and not a false Hebrew. Verse number 15, having abolished in the flesh the enmity of the law, that would be Moses, of commandments contained in the ordinance that will be from Moses for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, and we know that's the church, the law 118 and 124, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. You church of Christ on that uh, channel watching, you better wake up for you wake up in the devil's hell, mm -hmm. verse 17, and came and preached Peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. Now, who is that? The afar off. That would be the Gentiles. I had to see me have way up there at the top. And who's close? The Jews. Not just the Jews, all of Israel. See, that includes all the 11 tribes, even Benjamin, including and Judah. So look what he says. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Watch. Watch who's, a, watch who's a founder, so he wanted to know. Watch, who, watch who's going to be the master builder since he doesn't know how to read English and read that is he does understand. He's a very, let me just explain something to you. Michael Johnson is a very intelligent man, very educated, but he hates Christ man, and he's a racist. That's the problem. And, and, and we don't have no pictures of what Jesus looks like, but we know one thing, he looked like a Jew. We know that. And he was as plain as any Jew, and Michael can't stand that he wasn't black. Amen. That's the problem. Amen. For through him we both have access by one spirit into the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. See the letter is to the Gentiles. He's trying to give them hope. Don't worry about that you used to be outside you in now. But fellow citizens with the saints and who would the saints be? The Israelites. See that's the word he won't use in his little class. He keeps using Jews. They're trying to program your mind to think Judah, Judea, Judaism, Jew, two tribes, which supposed to be all black instead of the other ten. Israel includes all twelve. And so that's why Paul uses Commonwealth of Israel because the Holy Ghost knows the Michael Johnsons would rise up and lie against the gospel. So he took some simple words, which makes you wonder, did you really learn Hebrew in school? So look what happens. He says, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Did you see that? 
So the apostles and prophets that taught on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the foundation and he's the cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom also you are building together of an habitation of God through the Spirit. You lost your million dollars because they go to founders right here. So we don't want your money if you're sending a letter, I burn it. I don't want to touch nothing belong to you. But I'm going to tell you something else. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Just in case you want to lie about who's the foundation, since you want to try to lie, let's get this lie knocked out. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. 1 Corinthians 3 and 10. He says, according to the grace of God which was given unto me as a wise master builder. He can tell you when it started, Paul, because it was built before Paul started. Amen. I have laid the foundation. Now look what Paul lays when he goes from city to city. The foundation, and who is that? And another builder their own, but let every man take heed how he build their own. For other foundations can no man lay which is laid, which is the apostles. See, you thought it was apostles from Ephesians 2. That's why you got to go read a little bit more. It is Jesus Christ, the foundation. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, you got to be a saint to get this job. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he shall build upon, he shall receive a wall. But if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yes, so by fire. How is that? The work is the people. The work is the people. Paul said that you are the vineyard. We're just working. The work is the people. And everybody listening to false Hebrews on the earth, you're going to fall at the judgment. You're not going to last. And the false Hebrews, since he taught false doctrine to gain you, that's what causes him to fall. See, because in this scenario, only the righteous that taught the truth, building on the foundation of Christ. If you don't obey, you don't hurt us. We get to heaven anyway Amen. because the work got burned up. But in this case, the builder doesn't build on the foundation. Michael Johnson don't build on the foundation. He builds on racist hatred of white people who have done nothing to him. He went and got his papers from their school. The hatred of Hispanics and any other such like humans opposite of black people, My which mind. is ridiculous. That's a racist movement. Amen. But since the Internet and YouTube are free for all. You can teach that law all you want to. You won't gain nothing but that which God don't want anyway. Amen. And I'm going to call it 281-837-2222. Thank you, brother. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Thank you, brother. I tell you, I hope this is receiving the love that is given. I just would, would wonder if, brother, if Michael Williams would, would admit that Rahab was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. I wonder what he feels about Jesus helping the Canaanite woman mm -hmm. uh, in Matthew chapter 15. You know, why did Jesus even do anything for her? She wasn't a Jew. Why did he give her what she want? Uh, and when he, even after he told her to get the dogs, when she said the dog, the crumbs would fall from their mass. And Jesus answered and said to her, Matthew 15, 20, O woman, great is your faith, be it unto you even as y'all will. Now, Jesus being a Jew, why would he even do that for this Canaanite woman who definitely was not a Jew? Why would he do that? And he made his, made her daughter whole from that very hour. Was she a Jew or was she a Gentile, Michael Williams? And I, I want to say this. Don't ask me to come to no back room on your internet. That's what he's good at doing, too, getting you the naive and simple Christian. Yeah, just, just get him come to the back room. Come to the back room, and, and, and we can discuss all that. I ain't coming to no back room. Let's come to the front room. Amen. Let's come to the front room. Let's come in the open public and prove your point with Scripture. That's all. Otherwise, keep your mouth closed against the Most High God, my friend. Now, we got another question in. Javier got something he wants to say. I want to... Uh, Brother Javier, did you want to deal with this, or did you? Yeah, uh, okay, I'll toss it to Brother Javier. This is a write-in question. Go ahead, Brother Javier. Yeah, somebody said, someone uh, just asked if Church of Christ or church members should take uh, the COVID shot. Uh, they said, does Church of Christ take it, or should other members uh, take it? Well, everyone has to do their own study and research on their own. Amen. Uh, I personally uh, wouldn't take it based on what I've studied concerning the multitude of people that have died from it. Uh, but there's other people that have not had the same effect. Uh, but the idea is that you have to do your own study on your own. It's just uh, going to go in your arm or in your body. But uh, we know that God is watching over the saints uh, that are sealed. 
He is the one that controls when they leave, when they leave this earth, when they die. So the idea is that each person has to, with the liberties that God has given, to make his own uh, decision. But I, based on what I've studied, I will not take it uh, because of the things that I've found to be in it uh, were, you know, damaging to the body. That's yeah. personally well, for let myself. Let me say this, Ali. So hear. others, others have liberties to yeah. take it as they please. Right. But Amen. at the same time, you have to do studies and investigate concerning okay. that. Yeah. Amen. Now, you know, it's not a sin if someone chose to do no. it. I mean, it's, we're not using that as mm -hmm. a standard of a lack of faith in God if you got the shot. Amen. I just want to make sure that that's clear. You have a liberty and a freedom. And again, you make your own your own decision based upon that. But uh, Amen. Again, it has nothing to do uh, with a test of your faith. Amen. Amen. You. Amen. I want to also look at, uh, yeah, thank you, Brother Henry, mm. Exodus 12, verse 49. It says, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Now, I want to read this because when you look at this, God is talking to Moses. He's talking, he's communicating with Moses. At this time, the Hebrews are actually together. They're actually <laughs> together in the wilderness. So when it comes to stranger, there is no stranger if the stranger is a, a Jew because all the Jews are together. Amen. The Jews are together in one place, walking through the wilderness. So when he says, one that is home-born and unto the stranger, that sojourneth among you. So when it comes to uh, strangers, that's why they call them proselytes. They came forth. When it comes to Ruth, she was a non-Hebrew. She was a non-Hebrew. And why did Nehemiah get mad? Why did Nehemiah get mad? Because they were marrying outside of the Jews. And they were changing the customs from the law of Moses. They were talking in a different language. They were falling after other gods. But when it comes to one law, it's supposed to be for everybody, for the stranger, even for the old covenant. That's Amen. why when Jesus mentioned you make a proselyte twofold a devil than yourself, why was, what were they doing? The job was to make him a proselyte. But they were not supposed to make him twofold a child of hell. Amen. That's the what they were not supposed to be doing. When you look at uh, the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 19 but I, did, but I say did not Israel know? First Moses said I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation I will anger you. By a foolish nation I will anger you. So when it comes to jealousy why would they be jealous why would the Jews be jealous of other Jews if the other Jews lived in a different nation? But he says, of a foolish nation will I anger you. Because they're going to be of a, another nation. Whether Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians. That's how he's going to anger. Because he's going to place the same righteousness. Look what it says in Romans chapter 9. Looking at uh, verse number 30. It says, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel which followed, let's talk about the Jews, Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. You see that? The Jews, many of them did not follow after Christianity, after the New Testament. They did not follow it. But there were many Gentiles who followed and obeyed it. Audience, be careful when men say statements like this. When they say this, every time you see the word Gentile in the New Testament, it's talking about a Jew born outside of Jerusalem or Israel. Every time you see Gentile, it's talking about a Jew or a Hebrew born outside of Israel. That is a lie. Amen. That Amen. is a lie that they're pushing Amen. to promote their agenda and their doctrine. And they want you to believe it to be truth. But when you look at the but when you look into the Greek of the definition of Gentile, they say that the concordance is a devil's book. <laughs> so why do they say that? Because they don't want you to look at the definition of the word to see truth. Amen. They want to hide truth from you. Why? Because they have a form of doctrine. That form of doctrine, they want to exalt. They've embraced it, and they want you to embrace it. I want to read Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. But God be, 17, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, 
but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. There's a form of doctrine that the New Testament teaches. Contrary to the Hebrews, Israel United in Christ, ISUPK, Michael Johnson, they have a different form of doctrine. What did Paul tell Timothy concerning doctrine? He said, warn them that they teach no other doctrine. There's just one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to call us 2 22 22 Okay, I want to thank Javier. Hey, hey. And, uh, we hope and uh, radio listeners, friends, that you really are taking heed to the things that have been said. Uh, it is our job to uh, mark false doctrine, uh, false doctrine teachers. Again, we encourage you to be like the Bereans were. Uh, we want you to search the scriptures. Uh, to find out if the things that uh, you heard uh, during this hour program are in fact so. Again, we're not looking for a following. Uh, we're not trying to get you to follow us. Amen. Uh, we want you to believe God's word. Believe that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable doctrine and reproof correction. Okay? Now, Brother Javier, you had a thought you wanted to bring up before we close? Yes, I just had a quick question. Yes, my brother. Where in the Bible, Brother Henry, can you help me and find maybe Paul, Peter, John, where they brought up a million dollars in court to, in order to prove a debate of a subject of the Bible? Can you find that in a you Bible form? It. it shows it shows carnality uh, is what it does because he is carnal and we understand that. We know Michael Johnson doesn't have the spirit of God. Uh, I'd be, I, I'm, I'm scared to even ask him who he believes the Holy Spirit even is. Uh, but we understand he cannot see spiritually and so of course he uses carnality tactics uh, to help support uh, his doctrine and his teaching. You know, and that's no different. That's how Satan operates. He'll offer you the world. That's what he wants you to do. If you just simply bow down to him. I'll give you the world, he told Jesus when he took him up and showed him the kingdoms of this world. If you would just simply bow down and worship me. And that's what Michael Johnson wants. He wants an audience. Uh, he wants a following. He wants the world to see that he is the guru, great master teacher, Hebraeus, uh, of the United States and the world. And uh, he's getting his reward. He will get his reward and uh, if he doesn't repent. And my hope, and I thought I said this already, I really hope he repents. Amen. I mean, we don't want, God didn't want anybody to die lost, neither do we. It's not in our heart. My, it's definitely not my heart. I really hope he burns that apocrypha and really have an honest heart, swallow pride. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about is the Bible right and was I wrong. Amen. I hope he develops a spirit of humility. Be willing to go to his 7, 10, 15, 20,000. I don't know how many followings he got. He's got a lot. A lot of you listen to him. Many of you love him for, you know, but again, you got to love Jesus and, and truth Amen. more than you love anybody. And I'm going to tell you, Michael Johnson is wrong on this. Yes. He is wrong. And I hope he gets it right. And I hope those who listen to him and follow him, you know, if you, if you know he's wrong, help him see yes. that he's wrong. Before he leaves here, he's going to die one day. That's right. We all going to get out of here one day. That's right. And Jesus died for Michael Johnson too. That's right. And we want him to receive the gospel, obey it, and become a member of the people, the church of Christ, wow. the people of God that you can read about in the Bible. We want that for Joel Osteen, Greg Griffin, and everybody else who gets on this radio broadcast and teach false doctrine. Amen. Not questioning their sincerity, but wrong is wrong. If we're on here and wrong and you can show us the Bible where we're wrong, Help us. I want to repent. I want. I know I'm getting out of here one day. Yeah. And I want to stand before Jesus and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. And I don't want that just for me. I want that for everybody that Jesus died for. But again, God's not going to override anybody's desire and anybody's will. The question he asked the man in John 5, will you be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? We leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16. The Church of Christ salutes you. Uh -huh. Did he say God added nothing to the word don't take nothing from? That's right. That's right. That's right, Dave. You're right, man. Look here. We love you. So glad to have you Amen. here supporting us. And we appreciate you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Sarah, did you get to meet David? Yes. Well, yeah. very briefly. Yeah, last yeah. Sunday, I saw you briefly yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. God yeah. bless you. Welcome yeah. to the station. Yeah. I know it's yeah. He's blind, but spirits he can see clear. <laughs> see, the problem with him, man, is he's, you know, this guy's saying some 
very damn. I mean, not just it's very damaging, man. Yeah. <coughs> That's some very damaging things, you know. Oh man, I forgot on the internet. And just in case someone uh, has a problem with the two words unlearned and ignorant, see, people have a problem with what the Bible says. Now they don't have a problem when a man lies. Now this guy gets all on the internet off of a million dollars. How carnal is that? And foolish is like that. But the key is, is he wouldn't talk privately as one human being to the next. To me personally, he wanted an audience. But in the book of Peter, chapter, 2 Peter, chapter number 3. Just in case somebody think this was a pot shot, this is a gospel writer writing about what another gospel writer writes and how the only people don't accept what the gospel writer Paul, that was one of Paul's letters, his epistles, he says, Peter says, who preached the first gospel message, this what this person is. So here are the two words that you can choose if you don't believe one of Paul's writing or Peter's or others. The specifics about Paul, he says, 2 Peter 3 and verse 15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. Okay, verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. By who? Which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. He says clearly, you therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things, beware, that's also being led away with the error of the wicked, you fall from your own steadfastness. So now we see here, we see this word unlearned and unstable. Now there's one more word that Paul used of himself. When he did not believe Peter's teaching, Paul said, this is what I was. And we're going to go over to the book of Timothy. And look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. So I used two words, unlearned, ignorant, and I didn't use unstable. Now I'm bringing that in, so that's the third thing. you either unlearned, ignorant, or you're unstable. That's the triple threat, completion number three, of why you will not take the scriptures. 1 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy, forgive me, 1, and verse 13. He seeks of himself, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So now, unbelief is the key. I hope and pray as Henry ended eloquently, Mr. Michael Johnson, all you saints that follow him and all the world that listen to him, we love you. I tried to reach out to him privately in love. And when he started speaking racial terms against Hispanics, we were done. So there's nothing else we can talk about. And so I explained to him, the flesh prophets nothing, John 6, 63, but he doesn't respect that Jesus in the New Testament. He respects the black Jesus. Many of you worship this black, false, fake Jesus. But you're going to die lost. We need to help you understand that it is about worshiping a light-skinned Jesus. It's about the Christ who we know no longer after the flesh. And so those are the three. You search your heart, three areas, unlearned, unstable and ignorant. You've got to fall in one of those categories if you distastefully spit against these epistles that are written by holy men. All Michael Johnson and you and others have to do on the earth is like I, Henry, David, and Javier did. Read the text, ask God to forgive you, confess Jesus, Son of God, and be baptized and be saved. The law will receive you, and then Michael can start teaching the truth like we do. On his own channel, he doesn't have to join with us on anything. And that's the truth. God bless all of you.